In this video, I'm going to talk about sensory processing disorder, whether or not you need to get a diagnosis, labeling, how to be proactive as a parent, and in the end, which you need to stay tuned for, I'm going to show you some things that we use in our household to stimulate our children's sensory input. So stay tuned and keep watching. Hi friends, so I'm Leilani with Living with Eve and I am a former classroom teacher, 10 years, that has gone rogue and became a homeschool parent. And I have four kids and the youngest has Down syndrome. So in our household, we have a lot of sensory stuff going on. It's not just my daughter, but there's some others that have sensory stuff going on as well, including me. So the first question that comes to mind, what is sensory processing disorder? Let's talk a little bit about the nervous system. You're gonna have your central nervous system and that's made up of your brain and your spinal cord. That's the center, central nervous system. And then you're gonna have something called the peripheral nervous system. That's gonna be everything coming off of that central nervous system. Now those things communicate. So you're gonna have your peripheral nervous system communicating to your brain and spinal cord, right? There's communication going on. So let's say you touch something that's hot. It's hot, goes through your peripheral nervous systems, communicates to your spine and brain, oh, take your hand off, that's hot. So with sensory processing disorder, there is a little lack of communication or too much communication going on between those two parts of your nervous system. So it's gonna result in one of two things. You're either going to have a hypersensitivity or a hyposensitivity. So with a hypersensitivity, it means that when their senses are stimulated, it's just too much for them. So you're gonna see a lot of things in children that will signal that they're just getting way too much input. It's like, oh my gosh, I can't take any more. One is they're crying all the time. Let's say they don't wanna walk on sand or grass barefoot. It really bothers them. They don't wanna put their foot down when they're wanting to walk. It's that those babies that you try to get them to walk and they jerk their feet up. Another thing for hypersensitivity, they hate to put their hands in Play-Doh or mess with dough. They don't like certain textures of food. You know, you try to feed them puree and they're great, but as soon as you give them the chunks, they're like, nope, same taste and everything, but they will refuse it. They don't like to brush their teeth. They're gonna cry and blow a temper tantrum whenever it's time to do that. They don't like loud noises like vacuum cleaners or hair dryers or airplanes coming by. They don't like smells such as if you're cooking garlic with garlic that garlic smell bothers them it's just too much they cry or stick their head under a sheet when they lose their balance if you notice that they're stumbling around a lot also they're very very cautious with their movements like if they're coming down the stairs they're climbing with both hands down the stairs so that's going to be hypersensitivity hyposensitivity is the complete opposite they're going, I need more, I need more input. I can't stop moving until I get more input. That's gonna be your children that run around all over the place, that crash into walls, that fall down, that jump on the trampoline and just all over flips everywhere. They like to be upside down. They Sometimes they spin around and spin around and spin around. They never seem to get dizzy. They chew on their shirt, they chew on their pencils, they chew on everything just to get more and more of that stimulation. Uh, moving things around, kicking, just constantly in movement because they need more input. And that's my son. <laughs> so I guess the next question is, do you need to get this diagnosed? Well, that's really, I mean, completely up to you. What, first of all, why do you need a diagnosis? I mean, let's think about it. Um, if they're going to public school, it's nice to get that IEP and have accommodations. However, with sensory processing disorder on its own, if I'm not mistaken, it is not recognized as a disability or an official diagnosis, and you cannot receive an IEP for it. As far as I know, you could comment down below if things have changed or if I'm completely wrong, but as from what I remember when I was a teacher, that was not the case. In fact, we never really even talked about it as a disability or a diagnosis. Another reason you may want to get them diagnosed is because you want to receive OT, occupational therapy. And the other thing is, do you want to medicate your child? 
okay, why am I wanting to seek out this diagnosis kit? Is this something that I'm doing because my mom told me I have to get that done for my child because they're concerned? Is it something that people down the street are telling me, you know, this is what you do, this is the process that you do when you have these symptoms, go to the doctor, check it out? Or is it something where it's like, this is a serious problem, they're having a hard time in school, they can't focus, do I need to put them on medication or do I need to seek out help for this? If you homeschool, you know, is it something where I just can't handle this at home, he's not able to focus, his siblings aren't focusing. Can you afford occupational therapy? Can you afford the medication? In our case, we can't afford any of that. Because Naomi has her condition, Down syndrome, we are incredibly blessed that we have it, the insurance will cover it. Um, we have a special kind of insurance for her from the state of Florida, and I am so thankful for it that she does actually receive six sessions of some kind of therapy a week. I'm gonna say something pretty powerful, and it doesn't matter if you wanna get a diagnosis or not, I think it just applies to everyone. I think as parents, we need to stop focusing on the label or the diagnosis, but start focusing on what our children need. I'm gonna say that again. We need to stop focusing on the label but focus on what our children need. It's nice to say that my child has autism with a sensory processing disorder and ADHD, and you ramble that off to people and they're like, oh, okay, they're special. But what does your child need? You need to be proactive as a mother to seek out, and as a father, to seek out those things that you need to give your child. Now, if you do seek out to do OT and even seek out medication, but specifically OT, I'm gonna talk about that specifically. We go to, like I said, six sessions with my daughter. Love, love, love it. But it's six hours that they're with somebody else working on things and as I'm in there, or my husband's in there, and I'm learning and I'm watching the OT and the PT and even the speech therapist and the intervention specialist, what do I need to do to, to do that with my child? And I'm literally picking up things from those therapists to incorporate in my routine, my daily life routine, which you can actually check out some of those videos. I think it's on this side in the, <laughs> the link above. Also, I, I go on YouTube all the time. I'm a YouTube addict. I watch other homeschool or um, parenting vlogs to see how they do things with their children. I pick up on those ideas. I even look at um, occupational therapists. They have blogs that they put out there or little like teaching tools and I use those techniques and if they don't work for me, okay, it's not working. But if it does, I'm gonna use that. Now, I'm gonna share with you some of the things that I use with my, and I'm gonna actually focus on my son. He constantly needs, 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 needs. So when he was a baby, he was Mr. Nonstop Moving. Actually, literally the first time I hold him, I always joke around about this, but he was trying to do sit-ups always moving. I even remember when he was like two or three, I used to sit with him and I was putting him to bed and I was like, can you just stay still for 10 seconds? I'm gonna count to 10, I just want you to sit still. And he's like, okay, I can do this, I can do this. So he was probably like three or four. And he was try to and he could never make it to 10. But I will tell you this about him, he is the best cuddler in the world. No, nobody can cuddle like he can, but I think that's part of the input. He needs that input and he's constantly wanting to touch. He wants to get in your face, get in your way. I could go on and on and on. So some of the things that I do with him, just I'll show you, is one thing is I put him in gymnastics and I take him to the gym. And this kid can flip and even with his coaches, they have even commented to me that he's like really good at this stuff. So when we do our schoolwork, yeah, I need him to sit down and focus. Sometimes I will send him outside to the trampoline and I will have him bounce with his brothers and sisters for a good 15, 20 minutes. Sometimes I will have full-blown wrestling and tickling and just get that input. I have sometimes stuck him on a bouncy ball. I put him on a bouncy ball to do schoolwork. I also purchased this vibrating pillow. He sits on it and it vibrates and he could sit on that thing. He's almost addicted to that thing and just constantly just do his schoolwork and focus. Also when he reads, he loves to read and he's really good at it. But if I want him to stay on task, I will rub his head. And he absolutely loves it and when I stop rubbing his head, he grabs my hand and puts it right back on his head. So those are some ideas that you can use. You can totally steal them from me. And um, if you have any comments or suggestions down below, I mean, please start up a conversation. Thank you guys for watching. 
And I will go ahead and I will stick some playlists in here about my daughter with Down syndrome. And I hope that you have a great day. See you later. Bye.